once again, um, I have Kenya. Um, we're an entrepreneur support organization dedicated to the acceleration of um, human capital. Um, we ideally work with um, entrepreneurs, um, with uh, people that are ideally um, innovators to help them, you know, build solutions, build um, services that actually improve the day-to-day -day life of uh, each and every individual, um, not only just within their particular countries, but hopefully across the continent as well. Um, a, key part, a key part of what we're trying to do is not only just trying to solve the problems that we have as a continent, but as I was saying, improve the quality of life. Um, as a continent, we are known as, you know, we have so many issues, we have so many challenges to be addressing, but at the end of the day, that's not the only thing that we have as a continent. Um, there is quality of life. There are so many things that we, um, are, you know, as, as everyday Africans can be experiencing, and we are the people to ideally come up with the solutions, to ideally come up with um, the products that will actually make our day-to-day -day life, our day-to-day, you know, um, environment and society um, better for, you know, for the kind of products and the kind of um, services that's trying to come up. So as an organization, we better try to work with these innovators, these entrepreneurs that are actually coming up with these kind of solutions and try to support them to the best of our ability. Um, we normally do this by running incubator and accelerator programs. Um, as some of you might know, yesterday we were actually launching um, the second cohort um, to our MasterCard Foundation and Tech Fellowship Program. Um, where we're actually supporting 12 startups here in Kenya and 12 in Nigeria, um, you know, giving them access to first of all funding to to ideally grow their particular their particular product, and as well, you know, um, giving them the kind of technical support that they need to then you know develop this particular this particular product. Um, so the kind of services, the kind of um, technical support that we give is you know in line with um, helping them source the right kind of talent for their particular organization. Um, helping them look for other investment kind of channels for their particular organizations as well. But at the end of the day, just you know, giving them this an all round kind of product um, design um, support as well to make sure that the product they're actually coming up with is in line with the kind of you know, international best practices and standards uh, that we have um, across the globe. Uh, but aside from that, we do as well have a co-working element. Um, for some of you that might have been there in the previous um, online event that we had, I did give you a slight glimpse of how the space looks like. So today I'm also doing the same thing. So for today, I'm working from um, a different um, office as well. As you can see, the space, the space is roughly 90% done. Um, we are hopeful that the next time we'll actually call a new fun event, it'll actually be at a new space. So I'm very much looking forward to hopefully having you all um, here to you know, actually see um, the amazing space that we're actually going to come up with. Uh, but as in a national, that's who we are as an organization. And that's the kind of work that we're trying to do. Uh, but for today, um, we are joined by, um, for today, we, we, we ideally run um, a different kind of event. Um, the previous one that I remember we had, uh, we were having a phone speaker series where we were joined by Vian Karingi where she talked about, um, you know, using the power of your brand to, to get to the right kind of roles. Uh, but for today, we're going to be having a different series where we ideally going to be joined by um, the, um, the lovely individuals from Planet Space and talk about you know, the, the applicability, the realities of remote work, not only just from the, the employer side of view, but as well from the employee side of view as well. So um, joining us today, we have two um, lovely gents. We have Jackson um, Owago uh, and Newton Gary, who I don't know if whether he's joined or yes, he's joined the call already, uh, who ideally is gonna talk about you know, their, their work um, within workforce, within planet space, um, the kind of things that they're trying to do to again, you know, promote the culture of um, working from home, the kind of opportunities that you can get as well as you know, a developer, as someone within a tech space. Uh, but yes, let me not rumble on for too long, given the fact that you know, we are, we are it's, um, slightly behind time. But allow me just to introduce um, the man himself, Bonad Jackson Mwangu. So I really did not take up the space. Um, so yeah, so a round of applause, a lovely emojis, a lovely clap of hands, as we then introduce Mona Jackson to then not take it away for this particular session. So Mona Jackson, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Edwin, for that introduction. Uh, and also thank you so much for this opportunity to have this uh, conversation. It's a, it's a conversation we believe that is necessary in, in the times that we have uh, right now. I'd quickly introduce myself. My name is Jackson Owago. I work with Workforce Africa. Now, to quickly talk about Workforce Africa, Workforce Africa is a human resource consulting firm. Uh, and uh, what we do is we do recruitment, basically. Uh, we recruit for various organizations. Um, we have specialized in tech recruitment, and my colleague Newton will be able to share a bit about that. 
Um, so Workforce Africa, we are based in Nairobi, uh, Kenya, in Westlands, uh, on Nantana Road. Um, we are at Asia, Asia, Asia Building, uh, or Asia Towers, uh, on the third floor. That is where our Kenyan operation is. But we have been able to spread our tentacles over the 11 years that we've been in existence. We've been able to spread our tentacles to um, uh, 11 African countries, that is Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and East Africa. In the larger Eastern Africa, we have presence in uh, Rwanda and DRC. And in the South, we have presence in Ghana, uh, sorry, in, uh, in, uh, in um, Mozambique, Zambia, Zimbabwe, as well as Malawi. Uh, in, the, in the North, we have presence in Nigeria and Ghana. So we've been able to uh, as, uh, help people get, uh, or the help organizations get the best uh, talent within these markets. And um, uh, that, that is something we are looking one, one of the things that whenever we are trying to look for talent or we are trying to recruit for organizations, we have this request uh, from, from, from employees or the, from talent asking if we can be able, if the, is the job remotely, can I work remotely from, 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 you know, from wherever I am? I'm, work, I'm living in, in, uh, in Ghana. Can I work remotely if the job is in Kenya? So that is the kind of situation we kind of find ourselves in, and that's why we're having this conversation today. Should we be able to support organizations or should we encourage organizations to uh, consider uh, uh, working, uh, uh, adopting the, the remote work culture? Is it something that is viable? Um, and that is why we're having this conversation today. So uh, thank you so much, guys, and thank you for, 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 for joining. I'd let my colleague, uh, Newton, also introduce himself real quickly before we get into the conversation. Uh, over to you, Newton. Sure thing, Jackson. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Newton Ngare. I am also a part of the Workforce Africa fraternity, but I am in the Department of Future of Work. This is whereby we, I... I chair our tech talent marketplace, which is uh, goes by the cosign of Bandit Space, our online tech talent marketplace. And as Jackson has mentioned, Workforce Africa being a HR consultancy firm, we usually do have a lot of research. We do a lot of research and realize that the future of work is currently now aligning and uh, inclining towards remote work and uh, the hybrid setup. So in the meeting, you can expect me to take you through the strategies of a successful remote team. Uh, and uh, Jackson had mentioned everything. Uh, I love to be our to leave imagine. OK, <laughs> edit. Hello. I think uh, not that. Let me, let me mute her. OK. So I'm looking forward to a fruitful and a successful uh, session. And uh, thanks, guys, for joining us. Over All to right. you, Jackson. All right, fantastic. So um, we we were we were we were hoping that this session would be a, an interactive session where uh, we would get opinions from uh, uh, the audience just to see for those who have been working um, from home or remotely. Uh, what is your per, per, uh, or, or, or what what is your perception or what or how is it that how are you coping working remotely and those who are working on site uh, how is it that you are, are coping as well with this is something that you'd want uh, to consider working remotely and if you are working um, on site uh, or rather working remotely would you want to go back into the office I, I we, were, we were having a conversation that Edwin he told us that he's been working remotely for the last three months and uh, and now he's transitioning to on-site, so we'll have to get his opinion as well <laughs> to see uh, uh, what what it feels like to now transition from from working from home uh, to uh, working um, uh, on-site. So one of the things that we did realize whenever we are recruiting for for talent uh, is that from an employer perspective. Uh, uh, there are certain things that employees tend to find uh, a, a, a pro and cons, or rather, I'd say pro and cons for working remotely or working uh, on site. So one of the things we did notice when when we were doing recruitment is that when you announce a job as working remotely, then you get a wider pool of people uh, looking to uptake that role. Uh, uh, so that is an advantage on our side from a recruitment perspective. 
is that we do get a wider pool of, of candidates who are uh, who have um, interest in working remotely. Uh, the other thing is uh, we did realize that one of the things that um, that organizations tend to benefit when it comes to having uh, employees work remotely is cost savings. So maybe uh, the, the the dispenser doesn't have to um, uh, be refilled every week <laughs> because uh, you, you're working remotely. So there's some uh, a cost saving in terms of uh, uh, utilities, uh, office supplies uh, uh, don't get uh, uh, used. Um, you know, so there's a lot of cost saving when it comes to employees working remotely as opposed to uh, working on site. Um, one other thing that we noticed is that most employees that there's a bit of a bit more employee uh, employee retention when um, employees are, or the, when, when when talent is working uh, from 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 remotely. So uh, one of the things that most uh, employers would tell us is that whenever you have employees working remotely, you you tend to retain that those, uh, the talent for quite a lo a longer time. And also, you'll have improved uh, uh, employee um, engagement. Uh, one other thing that uh, uh, is a concern, rather, and, and that is something we want to discuss, is in terms of uh, productivity. How productive are employees when they work remotely? And we sampled, uh, uh, when, we, when we were doing this research and we were sampling some of the organizations we, we work with, we found that eight out of 10 were concerned about the productivity of employees working remotely. They were concerned about uh, of um, you know uh, uh, employees getting their work done when they are working remotely as opposed to uh, being uh, on site. So that is basically uh, um, my th our thoughts when it comes to um, uh, employees working remotely. So one other thing maybe I forgot to mention is the extended operating hours. Now for someone who works on site, you'll find that they would work on the hours that have been, um, you know, uh, allocated to them. So whether it's nine to five or eight to five or eight to four, that is the time they they dedicate uh, their roles. But we did realize, and when we asked a couple of uh, of those who work remotely, we realized that there's an expanded operating hours when it comes to working remotely, where now employees would find themselves working off, um, you know, past five o'clock up to eight o'clock. Um, some even working, uh, burning the midnight oil. So uh, there is that uh, aspect of um, ex ex expanded operating hours. So at this point, I would like to uh, just uh, uh, invite any questions or, or rather invite anyone who would have any questions to share them on the chats or be able to just raise their hands to kind of give an opinion on, uh, on this um, our subject. Uh, before that, I'd like to invite uh, one of um, the people that uh, we had had a session with regarding um, uh, this uh, 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 remote work. Uh, that is Victor. I don't know if Victor joined the chat. Victor, are you there? All right. Hi, Jackson. Can you hear me? Yes, Victor, I can hear you. So, Victor, oh, sorry, uh, we are, we, uh, yes? Oh, I keep being logged out. I don't know why. Ah, no worries, no worries. Technical issues here and there. Um, so, Victor, uh, 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 welcome. Maybe you can just quickly introduce yourself so that we can have a bit of a, a, a conversation on this. All right. Victor, are you there? It keeps logging me out. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Victor. <laughs> okay, my name is Victor Tieno. Oh, I'm a data analyst from here in Kenya at Pathways Technologies. Uh, I do work hybrid both in office and off the office. Yeah, so far that's it. All right, Victor, thank you. Thank you so much for that. So now we, we just wanted to get your opinion for someone who's working uh, on site and sometimes even a uh, hybrid. Um, what, what, how is your experience like working on, on site? 
Okay, so far I can say it's, it's been good because uh, working uh, on site makes me interact with my colleagues, clients, and through that we solve the client's problems immediately. Unlike working uh, online or virtual at home, where we can't interact physically with the client because some of the client's requests are very tough. Uh, tech Sorry, guys. Okay. Oh, I don't know why it keeps logging me. I was telling me that the meeting is being recorded. So I was saying that some of the requirements, like uh, in the tech field, some of the requirements are very technical that we need to interact with the customer or the client physically to deal with them. So to me, working on site has been better because there are some technical skills that I learned. them thank you all right um uh, before we continue with that i did see a question in the chat um uh, edwin either uh yes sir actually the question actually comes from myself um, um uh, personally um so if you don't mind me reading it out um the question reads um could you share some tips on how to apply for remote jobs um, in companies out of Africa. Um, I think this comes from like from a personal um, experience where um, you see really amazing roles that um, we generally feel like we've been a, um, we've been good um, and fit for. But then given the fact that at the time, um, I don't know it's whether they never really consider applications from Africa, um, uh, what normally happens, because I, I have tried it a couple of times, but um, to, to no success. So then to know whether there are some, you know, some kind of tips that are probably not considering. Today, like we're applying on my VPN zone, and they think that I'm closer to home, or <laughs> um, how best in, um, how best should I go about it? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I get your question, and this is a question we get a lot. Uh, how can how can uh, people who are uh, other uh, for us who live in Africa, how can we be able to get remote jobs? And just for clarity, you're talking about remote jobs in uh, 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 um, uh, uh, countries um, that are not in Africa. <laughs> yes. Uh Yes. So um, one thing, one 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 thing I'd I'd want to share is um, first you need to be able to build a very strong online CV. All right. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, one of them is Fund Space, which I, I, I'll let Newton talk about it in a few. Um, once you have been able to build that online CV and you share it with various job job, job uh, uh, agencies like Fund Space then it gives you a leeway to be able to, um, to, 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 to kind of get ahead. And we'll talk about CVs in a few. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get to get ahead in terms of, uh, of, of getting uh, online jobs. So the first step is to build a strong uh, uh, online, online CV. See those CVs that you upload on Brighter Monday and, and Fuzu, you need to build a very strong CV that is within um, uh, the area that you're lucky looking to, uh, to apply for a role. Uh, maybe I'll let Newton also jump in on that because he handles most of the the, the, the virtual uh, 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 recruitment. Newton, go ahead. Sure then, uh, Edwin. Uh, one problem that you might be getting is you are you are you are applying for jobs that are not in the geographical mapping of the client's need. So for anybody listening, if you're looking forward to getting a remote job, kindly go and. Uh, and uh, focus on the niche that uh, uh, indicates that their ge geographical mapping is in the EMEA region. This is the Europe, Middle East, and uh, Eastern Asia, then Africa. Because you might find that you are looking for a job that is uh, in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. You are in Kenya, but they have specifically said that they maybe need somebody who is in the States. They maybe need somebody who is in a Scandinavian country. So that might be one of the challenges that you're meeting. Another thing, I'll give the developer perspective. From the engagement that we've been having with international job uh, aggregators, they do focus a lot on uh, 
stuff like uh, let, let me go technical everybody who is a developer must have a github account so uh, once you do the application you might find them saying that okay uh, upload your linkedin profile maybe then your github account so what they usually do is they check on your activity your heat map uh, github usually gives you a, uh, indicates a, a heat map you can't be applying for a senior role and uh, the last time that you pulled something you pulled a request on github was november 2022 so that's how they screen you and uh, disqualify you because believe you me if uh, if you want to apply for a remote role you are in kenya there's somebody in mauritius yeah. there are guys in the states uh, who are also looking forward to getting this uh, job Another thing that, that I'd, I'd, I'd also advise you is look for a lot of certificates. As Jackson had mentioned, uh, the online CV, ensure that it has skills. Then also br brush out some unnecessary things on your CV. You're looking for a software developer job, then on your CV in your experience, it says that you, you are a Boy Scout in 2016 to 2018. So those are some of the things that these, these individuals used to cut you off on jobs uh okay. i think i've given a brief on tips on how to apply for the remote jobs but the key thing is always ensure that you are applying for a job that is in scope of your geographical mapping even if you use a, 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 a vpn the vpn usually changes after each and every 30 minutes so right now it says that you're in london then uh, the next minute another guy is reviewing it saying that you're in russia that automatically displays you, uh, disqualifies you. Just be yourself. Uh, apply as you. Don't use pseudos. Don't use uh, things like that. So yes. Uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, Nita. And one of the things that you were you were going to mention earlier on is that uh, for those who are joining us today, we are going to offer you a free CV review. So we'll be able to share our details uh, so that we can be able to advise you on how best to tailor your CV to be able to get uh, remote jobs. So um, I don't know if uh, Newton can be able to share our contacts on the chat. So for anyone who would like to have their CVs uh, reviewed, you can uh, send, us, send us an email with your CV, and then we can be able to uh, review your CV for purposes of just advising you um, uh, on, on the best way to be able to apply for, for remote jobs, right? Okay, um, now uh, moving on, uh, uh, we'd like, I'd also like to invite someone uh, who works remotely to be able to give her perspective on, uh, on working remotely and, um, and what, uh, what, what kind of benefits she's been able to acquire in terms of, uh, of working remotely. So I don't know if Didi is on the call. Didi, are you there? Uh, yes, hi, Jackson. Hi, Didi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Okay, welcome, welcome. Maybe you can just quickly introduce yourself so that um, uh, the audience can actually get a feeling. Yeah, so my name is Didi Kashemwa. I am a software developer. I work for a company called Sibasi. We are a software and solutions company in Nairobi. Yeah. All right, Didi. So uh, when you're having a conversation, you said you work remotely, right? Yeah. Yeah, so tell us a bit about that. How, how has it been like? Uh, personally, I totally enjoy it. <laughs> of course, everybody enjoys it. Uh, it's the beauty. But so let me explain. So we usually work hybrid. So we, we have one day of the week where we have to go to the office. Like it's mandatory. So every Monday we go to the office. It's usually like a meeting day for departments where we touch base. Um, we talk about what's been happening, you know, just the feeling of human, humanity, humanness. <laughs> yeah. So other than that, every other day of the week, it's uh, it's as you please. You can go to the office if maybe you don't have light in your house or you don't have Wi-Fi, just the normal things. Like we don't want to have any continuity because maybe someone doesn't have electricity or I don't have money to go to Java and zero, work from there. Or I don't have, I don't know, take, take this no excuses. So the office is always open and we also have a lunch. So basically choosing to work from home is a personal choice, but you can work from home or from the office. Everything is catered for by the office. So personally, I enjoy working from home because of the flexibility in my scheduling. 
so most times you see i'm i'm able to create my era my balance between so, work. um now one thing that uh organizations do have um Right. Uh, um, uh, so one thing that organizations do, sorry. I don't know. There's a glitch. <laughs> yes, uh, there's. I think there's a glitch somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just, uh, so one thing that uh, we did realize when we are we are doing recruitment for organizations um, is that the concern is that those who work remotely are less uh, productive. So maybe tell us how do you feel working remotely, do you feel that you're more productive as you work remotely or uh, do you feel that you could be more productive if you, if you get to work in the office? Uh, so we had this convo also at some points and we, we learned that I can be in my desk in the office, I'm not doing anything. So if I need to be in the office to work, it means either you have the wrong employees or people who are just not uh, in the right place, because you find like if you're working from either okay uh, from the as a software dev, most of the work at night. So you find they might have a like I'm, I want to deploy something during the night, then maybe on a chill during the day. So if I was to go to the office, um, if I, I can only work in the office, it means I have to be in the office even during the night, through the floods, through the rains, and all the other things. But mm. I don't think. I don't think productivity and being in the office have any correlation. I don't think so. All right. Uh, maybe I could drag Edwin into this conversation now that he's uh, transitioning into uh, the, the on-site. So Edwin, what what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Do you find, did you find yourself being more productive as you're working remotely or uh, how, how was it like? Was, would, would coming back into the office make you a, a slightly more productive? Um, so I'll be quite honest with it. Um, so my field is uh, the field of community management. Um, so my marriage is a little bit different, given the fact that um, I manage um, uh, a physical community. Uh, so working remotely has had its challenges, given the fact that uh, there's only so much I can do in terms of uh, engaging and you know, communicating with this particular community. Um, um, virtually, that's why sessions like this ideally came up. Just to make sure that we are still just trying to get out from those kind of realities. But um, on a personal level, on a personal, personal level, um, I do feel as if I am more productive um, when it is my schedule that I am controlling by myself, given the fact that um, I am able, as a perfect example, I could wake up at 7 a.m., um, do a work sprint in like 11, 12, and, you know, and be more or less um, done the day. And then that will then allow me to. You know, pick up some other kind of um, extra kind of um, classes that I'm taking up, or you know, some other kind of um, extra stuff that I have on um, the side. But yeah. um, coming back to the office has um, its perks, given the fact that I am a very social human being. Um, living by myself, that I'm working from home, does not allow me that kind of um, opportunity to interact and engage with people. Um, so at least there is one positive that I can see coming back to the office on gaming because um, it's the power of community, the power of networks. Um, so very that aspect is I'm very much looking forward to, um, but if they can do like half and half and still be quite okay with it. Yeah. Yeah, half and half. I've seen a lot of that going in half and half. And that is the point where I want to drag in Newton as well to just tell us how remote work has benefited, uh, how does remote work, you know, kind of benefit employees from his perspective? Okay. Uh, I will be just brief. I'll be more on the economy side. It's more economical working from home than on site because you aren't paying the the daily commuting fare. There the are those expenses, the lunches, maybe your office, the current office setup doesn't offer that. Or you're working at home. Another advantage of, of working remotely is the remote uh, working is goal oriented. It's result oriented. I read somewhere a fellow saying that most guys who work on site usually just are productive uh, two to three hours out of the eight hours, eight working hours that are conventionally allocated by uh, labor laws. But if you're working remotely, if, uh, I'd rather take a remote team than an on-site team because this is a uh, result oriented. If I tell somebody like Medu, Medu is supposed to create a, a layout before 4 a.m. before 4 p.m. tomorrow. Whatever he does with whatever he does with uh, his work uh, life balance, 
all we want is the results, which will be more difficult when it's on the office setup, because somebody might argue, ah, this guy is working eight hours, so I expect the work to be done. But when you go up to the following the follow-up meeting, you realize the guy starts telling you issues and issues. The job was not done because of this, this, and this, this brought up. I don't know, but so next came to my desk and told, gave me a technical problem. They have a they had an issue with their laptops and stuff. So yeah, I'd I'd rather I'd choose remote either way, uh, all the way through. Jackson. Yes, 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 I can hear you. I can hear you, Newton. Um, yeah. uh, at this juncture, I'd like to bring Titi back as well to just um, get her opinion on some of the challenges, some of the challenges that she faces in terms of working uh, remotely. Um, with it, whether it is communicating with her fellow teammates or her fellow uh, colleagues, so or collaboration within different uh, departments. So just share with us, Didi, how uh, what are some of the challenges that you face in terms of working remotely? Uh, yeah, so one of them, it's more of like, I don't know if it's a challenge per se, but you find most times you don't know when to stop. So you might find I start on my desk at let's say 9 a.m. and it's like midnight, I'm still in the desk. So uh, you get that time to sort of like tell myself I will work from 9 to 7 or 9. That's one challenge. And the other one would be um, I work with other with my other colleagues who might not be always available when I need them. So if, might find, if I was in an office, I'd just quickly go to their desk and get like, info. But this other time I have to call them, maybe they're offline and maybe they're coming back quickly. That might be a challenge, but it's not a constant challenge because we all, like Tutan said, we're all goal oriented. So we all know if we need to have a meeting, we set it like um, early. So don't just ambush somebody and say, hey, let's have a call. Or, hey, I need your help. Like you prepare somebody and that's a really important thing. Yeah. Or maybe sometimes they might work it from home and then, like I said, it might not have lights, it might not have, like, just the non inevitable things which I manage with. If I'm to be asked, yeah. All right. Um, just to, maybe just to emphasize on that, um, uh, I see a question by Mwendo. I think uh, um, Edwin, you can read that out. Um, all right, cool. So the, the question from Ms. Munda reads, I mean, you could touch on working with people from different time zones and how you overcome um, those kind of challenges. That would be great. All right, different kind of time zones. I don't know if, DP, you work with people in different kind of time zones? I do. So you find yes. some of the times of that, you sort of like have to adjust your time zones. Or you might just communicate and say, hey, at this time I'll be asleep. So even most things people understand, like most times, uh, most of our clients are maybe in South Africa, so that's not very different time zones. But if it's out of Africa, we have like an eight hour difference. You find most clients or colleagues actually understand. So you can either plan, like I said, ahead and agree, let's meet at this time or let's touch base at this time. So you have like, it's more like a mutual agreement on if they really need you that time, you just have to be available. If it's in a, it's, it's an age, it's an age. Have you ever at some point found yourself uh, working midnight because you have to deal with a client who is on a different time zone? I see US is usually uh, 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 very, you know, uh, apart in terms of time zones. Is that something that you've ever faced uh, any, any challenge? I have, but I've not had any challenge with it. All right, it's been just a smooth... Just adjust, yeah. All right, okay, fantastic. Hope that answers your question. Uh, maybe I could jump into Newton to just uh, give us some of the strategies for, you know, how to manage uh, our working remotely and managing a team that is working remotely. Before I jump uh, to that, I'd like to add something on Mwendo's question. Mm. Okay, so... As I had told uh, Edwin, most of these guys giving you remote jobs, they have met this challenge, the time zone different, the different time zone challenge. So now they are packaging their, their roles and jobs according to a specific time zone. So you must be in the EMEA region to be plus or minus three hours in, in, 
according to their time zone. If that's a challenge, uh, it means maybe somebody lied when when applying for a job, because these uh, US guys are really strict, very very strict. So if they realize that you're you are eight hours ahead, they might they might uh, perceive some inconveniences and uh, end up not giving you that job. But if you take up that job, it means that you went through the interviewing process and uh, agreed to working according to their time zones. Because yeah. most of these remote jobs usually indicate willing to work according to a specific set time zone. So that's usually on you. Okay, so I'll just be brief. I see we are currently short on time. So I'll just give you three strategies that we usually utilize when it comes to uh, remote uh, project management. So the first one is always ensure that you have indicated and uh, given a strong definition of what done means. So what do we indicate that this uh, module is done? Uh, what is uh, the predefined set? So how do we indicate that this job has been uh, ticked done? One challenge that guys usually have is uh, you take up a project Assuming Mwendwa is uh, working for somebody in the States, you have been told to create a software dev uh, a software for them, a website maybe. Then the client says, I want this to go according to our corporate brands. You are seated in Kenya, you haven't ever, uh, uh, you have never interacted with the corporate, you don't know their brand colors, but they've given you a drop down because most, most of these guys, they do align on, everything usually works on the first weeks. You have the project, you have the project uh, timelines, you have the kickoff meeting. Everybody says that I'll do this, this, and this, but usually the second and third week is where the challenge usually comes in. So if you don't have a clear definition of what done is, then the project will be set to fail. And uh, as somebody had mentioned, working on site, uh, you don't have to be reminded. Just seeing somebody will remind you, oh, I have something to do that is in relation to a tied role with uh, maybe person X of which could not be the same if somebody is a thousand kilometers or 20,000 kilometers away from you. So how do we navigate through this? Once the client has issued the, the breakdown of whatever is supposed to be done, we do have uh, video calls. We call them video call sessions where the team and the project manager align. So if it's the, let me, let me just go back onto the software development issue. You want the website to have this and this set of uh, corporate brands. Tell us, where do you want this color to go? Where do you want this side paint to go? Uh, once that is set, at least a developer knows this is going to be the clear definition of that. So you'll be able even to, to, to uh, give your time and say, I'll do this at this specific time because I know this is what is supposed to be my deliverable as we do the next meeting. The second strategy, guys should set really realistic deadlines. Most challenges that uh, first projects, uh, people who, who don't have project management skills do, they just tell you, we have this module, assuming we are creating a human resource management system, we want performance management done by Friday. So you're just a project manager. Most project managers don't usually have the, are, are, are not so tech survey, they just have the management aspect side. So this guy comes and uh, tells you, I need this done by Friday. The developer knows that this module might take two days to complete. So uh, it's uh, their nature to push it to, uh, until towards the end of the week. Then on doing the role, they realize, oh my God, this thing will even take up more than four days. So that's where you find guys uh, delaying uh, from giving deliverables. So how do you cap this? The first thing is, uh, just use the same video call method. If this is a website, let's break down the and uh, restructure, break down everything according to subsets. If it's a module, let's plan. Okay, let's say this will be, the first two days will be layout design, the next uh, one day will be functionality, the, the next uh, day will be feature functionality, the other day will be testing, and then uh, lastly will be debugging. And then the developer will have that all scheduled in according to their week. A benefit of this is, uh, one, they are clear set of instructions. So as a developer, I know, even if I'm working remotely, I know that I'm supposed to be doing this certain role on uh, this specific time. Another thing, 
uh, it helps a developer organize themselves because these break these break deadlines are uh, being told that you you're supposed to have this deliverable by friday somebody has given you sub tasks you're the one to manage yourself you usually push them towards the, the last last days and uh, do other things then you end up uh, delaying the project this uh, approach brings uh, the aspect of steadiness and uh, me metric measurement so you can measure and, under and understand if a project manager is going to discuss the project uh, with the owner of the project and maybe there's a deadline you can be able to identify this task was not that by person x so person x is the one failing the group once you have the aspect of uh, sorry i don't know if it's the bora who is uh, speaking you can kindly mute him for me so as a as a as a project team you are able to tell uh, this is a person who failed us so what measures are we going to take to this person instead of letting the entire team go down the drain lastly you're supposed to conform to a follow up method how am i going to follow you up as a project developer as a project manager you're supposed to be have done this by this specific time most uh, software devel development teams use the agile methodology where they usually have a 15 minute stand up meeting each and every day but some tasks are really critical so assuming i need something assuming the, the, the site has failed when we are on deployment maybe it's something done by a backend developer or which method will we use to follow up that's something we are going to talk as a team if uh, most most of these western countries usually conform to slack there are better tools like asana trello clickup which have an auto automation and auto notification telling you that okay you're lagging behind or something something and something so once you have uh, put in mind the three strategies that i've outlined i don't think you can find it they are integratable with any project management framework so jackson i think i've uh, given my brief on strategies on how to ensure that a uh, remote team works and uh, the, the deadlines and uh, milestones are achieved all right fantastic thank you thank you that thank you so much Nishan, for that um I'd, I'd like to invite anyone who has a question or some an input to uh to 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 just share it with us you can is it uh edwin can they raise their hands or just turn on their mics um yeah, that is quite okay but raising your hand and probably give it a bit more order. all right so if you have any questions uh, or any clarification you'd want one thing i also want to mention for those who are just joining we are offering a free CV review for anyone within uh, 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 this um, uh, uh, discussion. So uh, we've been able to share our email address or my email address on the chats uh, so that you can be able to send your CV and you can do a review and give our insights for those who are looking to uh, apply for remote jobs uh, uh, abroad. Now, uh, just to drag Didi back into this uh, conversation, um, if you are to choose between um, uh, working remotely and uh, and and working on site or even hybrid. Which one would you recommend? Um, I think I would recommend hybrid, just for the sake of the balance, you know, because um, we still need to strengthen the culture of being a company. But that's if you're working in the same region or in the same uh, place or in the same like the same country or the same city because it would be very unfair to say hybrid and one person is in Kisumu and the office is in Nairobi or one person is in Mombasa and the office is in I don't know uh Nyeri. So I would prefer hybrid for myself just for that balance. Yeah. Hybrid well, hybrid it is. All right. I don't know if there's any questions or any input. I think Wanja has a hand up. Uh, Wanja, you can go ahead and uh, ask a question. So, uh, input, that's a question, Pathé. But just to say that um, I I do agree that sometimes it might, people might have, uh, not just look at what you want as a job, but what your work pattern is. Because um, I think some people do better in social situations, so the office would be a better uh, environment for them, while mm -hmm. other people have a better way of working 
uh, at home because they 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 thrive in that uh personal space. So I think the, there also needs to be some sort of personal development that comes into when you're looking for work. What kind of a employee are you if I tell you're an employee? Mm -hmm. And where do you thrive the most? Um, because just to give an example for myself, I am very I'm quite introverted most of the times. So if I'm in social situations, I might be feeling the pressure to perform just because I'm in a social situation. While right. if I'm working by myself, I can be able to plan my time and it gives me more, I actually feel more productive that way, that I'm able to plan my time. And because also the organization I work for, they really advocate for working with uh, uh, deliverables, they call them deliverables, which I think is just goals. So you're given a task and let's say it's three weeks that it should be handed in. So it's up to you to really decide within the three weeks, how do I break down this task to make sure that I submit what I need to submit. And then at the end of it, now they assess your, do they call them KPIs, Key Performance Index? So I, I find that a nice way to work. But again, it, I, I feel like the greatest um, uh, asset would be for people to understand when they work best and how they work best and then go for what suits that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. That's uh, that's that's uh, that's. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. Um, I don't know if there's any other input. Uh yes, there is a question. Um, in the chat box. Um, coming in from Miss Wenda once again. Um, she is asking. Um, what would be your advice? Um, uh, for someone who is looking to get into you know the dev field, but they're not coming in from mainly a communication stroke. You know, I'm writing kind of a. Right. I think Newton will take that one since he is handling most of the tech side. Sure thing. Uh, my question to uh, who is asking the question again? Uh, Edwin, it's Mwendo. Oh, is it Mwendo still? No, no, no. Uh, yes, Miss Mwendo. So she's asking, uh, she wants advice. She wants to get into dev from uh, mainly communications or writing remote work. My advice to her would be upskilling first because uh, the space, the tech space is more so becoming saturated. And uh, now developers, you, you need to have something to show. We have the uh, Tech Accelerator Institute. You have the likes of Moringa School. You have the likes of Zindua School. That offer a, month, uh, a, a, a one month long uh, one month long uh, program for you to upskill yourself because what the job giver currently needs. If I'd uh, give it just a small time, if I was to draw an x axis and uh, between x and y, we have a differentiation of jobs that need experts and uh, those that uh, likely need uh, guys with less experience. I'll give two examples the one that needs a person who is quite experienced. Take, for example, a heart surgeon. A heart surgeon and a software developer might be put in the same scope because softwares nowadays are driving the world and uh, you need to be really good at what you're doing. And like the other one who needs a small, uh, a person who doesn't have quite a long experience, like assuming somebody who is digging trenches, you see a, a trench, you can't expect it to be super perfect. You just need something to dump something on it. But for a software, for a heart surgeon, you need perfection. For me to you is uh, telling you that I'd request you to upskill yourself. There are also a lot of uh, free learning materials. We are in the network information edge. You can get a lot of those. Then up and about, you can talk to Jackson. He can coach you and uh, maybe mentor you on how to brand yourself as a remote, uh, remote uh, technical talent. Right. Speaking of branding yourself, uh, I think Newton has been able and, and Edwin has been able to share my email address on the chats where you can be able to send your CV for review for a free review, and we can be able to kind of just give you our insights on on how best you can position yourself to be able to get uh, remote jobs. I don't know if there's any other uh, question, uh, um, Edwin. Um, none in the chat box, unless there's probably anyone else that um, has more of a All right. 
as 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 I think we are just uh, almost coming to an end of uh, of the session. So if you have any questions, you can just uh, uh, share with us. I would also like to, in, but before we kind of end the session, I'd like to invite Newton as well to just uh, share a bit about Panit Space and why it is uh, the ideal platform for you to get uh, remote jobs. Newton, you can go ahead. Sure thing, Jackson. Thank you very much for the opportunity once again. Uh, good afternoon, guys, once again. So Pandit Space is our online tech talent marketplace. It functions uh, more like the likes of Upwork, the likes of Fiverr, but we are currently on the niche of technical talent. So we are in the space of software development, artificial intelligence, data science, cybersecurity, cloud computing, and the likes. And uh, it will be so beneficial for you because uh, through brokering uh, partnerships with the uh, HR consultancy firms, they usually come to us when in need of developers. I've uh, written in the chat box, the, 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 the chat. I've given a link to join uh, and register as a freelancer. It, it's a four-step process. You just need to log in with the name, register with your email address, update your skills. We really have a high-tech algorithm because each and every time our client maybe is in Mauritius, they need a developer. We just go back to our database. Uh, the algorithm searches through the skills that the guy requires, then we reach out to you. Also, Pandit Space is going to incept a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, peer -peer ecosystem. We now we'll be having employers posting tech jobs on the platform and uh, you sending your proposals. So it will be really great and I'd uh, really not want somebody to miss out being part of iHub's community, them being uh, our partners and uh, would really want to give back to them. Because your community has been really awesome. They have been really supportive. So we'd also want to give a, 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 a hand and uh, urge you to, if you're a software developer, just create a platform from the link that you have shared. Once a job is available, we will reach out to you. Another benefit of being in our platform, we really have a large community. A large community. And uh, we even started a community channel via WhatsApp. I'll share the link. Each and every Wednesday and uh, Saturday, we do post uh, strictly remote jobs that are in the EMEA region. So we identify that most guys are trying to look for jobs and uh, are not getting them. But we have a team of technical recruiters in our organization who, who research on the trending jobs. Each and every Wednesday and Saturday, we post the links, direct links uh, to the application processes. So I'm sharing that. And uh, I'd really urge you as developers to join us. Bandit space will be a really big thing. Over to you, Jackson. All right, fantastic, Newton. Thank you so much for that. I think it's very clear. If you want to get a feel of, of, of the remote jobs that we have, you can be able to join our, uh, our Bandit Space WhatsApp channel where Newton is able to post um, and uh, remote jobs every Wednesday. Um, uh, with that, I think I'll give my final remarks, if that's okay, uh, uh, Edwin. Yes, so I'll give my final remarks before I hand it over to Edwin. Um, one thing uh, is that when it comes to remote work, we as an organization, we are trying to kind of uh, uh, work, uh, push this for most organizations that we could for because we have realized that there is a, a, um, a clear work-life balance when it comes to working remotely. And for us to be able to uh, succeed in that, it's up to you guys to be able to share your opinion in platforms like this and give that feedback to most of the employers to, sh to, to, to tell, let them know that even though you're working remotely, the productivity does not go down because that is the major concern when it comes to working remotely for most organizations from our perspective is that the productivity uh, of those who work remotely is a concern for them. So when you have uh, 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 people like Didi coming on, 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 on the platforms like this to share her opinion on working remotely, it will greatly um, you know, assist us in terms of pushing for this agenda. I'd like to also thank you all for joining us today and having this conversation and making it interactive. I'd like to thank uh, uh, my guest Didi and um, and Victor for coming to, to share their uh, opinions on on working remotely and also working on site. 
I'd like to thank Edwin as well for giving us this platform to have this conversation. Uh, I'd like to thank Newton, my colleague Newton, for uh, you know uh, sharing uh, his perspective as well. Uh, with that, um, I'd like to uh, wish you all a lovely weekend, and I'd hand it over to uh, Edwin to close the session. Um, all right, cool. Thank you very much, um, Jackson, Newton, um, Didi, and uh, I believe it was Kennedy. My apologies if I got it wrong. Victor, sorry, yes, and Victor as well, uh, for making the time to be here and sharing your insight and sharing um, your expertise as well. We very much appreciate it. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Nivar and that actually made the time as well to be here for this particular session. Um, I do know we had a bit of a technical issue at the beginning, but thank you very much for um, sticking through with us and, you know, um, sticking um, all the way till uh, past uh, the time that I really repeated for this particular session. Um, so, so I think that has been it for this month's edition of the Dev Junction. Um, um, Newton and Jackson have shared so many resources that you can ideally um, take a look into. So if you're a developer looking for remote gigs, remote jobs, make sure that you check out Pandit Space. Um, um, join their particular community where you daily get um, updated on new opportunities that they can as well um, um, apply for. Well, as well, you know, I'm sharing tips and tips of trades of how to really get these kind of opportunities. And as well, each and every one of you, Jackson has been um, gracious enough to, um, you know, um, provide, you know, free CV sampling or ideally um, review for yourself as a developer. You know, if you're looking to see, you know, you're wondering why you're not getting these opportunities like myself. <laughs> um, so it will be a great thing just to make sure that at least, you know, take up the opportunity and receive it for an actual experts will actually be able then, you know, to help you, guide you how best, you know, to get these kind of opportunities. Um, yeah, so that has been it for this month's edition of the Dev Junction. Once again, my name is David Bethel, um, coming straight from um, our lovely new iHub office. Uh, which will ideally hopefully be open to the public um, at, this, um, at the start of this new month. Um, Kama Kawaida Kama Dawa, uh, we're going to wrap up each and every session by taking a quick photo. Um, so I'll just ask each and every one of you all, uh, regardless of how the background looks like, if you could just quickly just um, turn on your camera just for a quick two or three seconds uh, so we can just um, you know, commemorate this particular moment um, as we then come up to the wrap of this particular event. We very much appreciate it. So if you could just turn on your camera just for a quick second, a quick minute. Uh, so you can just have a base. If you have one, oh, it's you, one. Okay, so. <laughs> um, every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my God, it's a small one. Sorry. Um, it's a corner candle. Um, to Didi as well. Um, I, I can see more beautiful faces. Um, we're going to just take a quick photo to ideally just wrap up this particular session. Um, who else? Who else? We have Gipinji on the call. We have Andrew on the call. Um, Edith, um, amazing. Who else? Who else? Ah, but the Ian, amazing to see your face. Francis as well. Andrew, atakio kwa gari tunapicheki. Thank you very much for making the time. Um, <laughs> amazing, man as well. Ah, amazing, amazing, amazing. Charles, thank you very much for the kind messages as well as we're wrapping up this particular session. John, lovely to see you from your house as well. Francis. Amazing, Makanda. Ah, this I wanted to, you know, we appreciate that you tried. We appreciate that you tried. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm gonna give you um, a slight countdown from three to one. Uh, once I get to one, please hold the pose. Be as flexible, be as innovative as you can with it. So that ideally we can wrap up this particular session. All right, cool. Ah, uh, Francis, I see you. I see. You. Okay. So in three, two, one. Hey. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you very much to everyone of for making the time. We very much appreciate it. Um, as usual, we will not be uploading this particular session on our YouTube channel at I Have Kenya. So um, by Monday, Tuesday, please do um, give us um, a follow on our YouTube channel. If in case you meet bits and sections of this particular session that we'd like to listen back to, while as well as having a chance to look back at some of the other events that we've had over the last couple of months. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. I wish you a lovely rest of the day and a lovely weekend as well. All right, bye, everyone. Hope you enjoy the rest bye, of the day. Bye, bye.